from Australia. This is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Hi, it's Graham, VK4BB with the national news for week commencing July 31, 2022 from your WIA. This week, a special word to those it may concern in VK6. A reminder for our female contesters, immediate past president of your WIA on the art of cure selling, and sad news from our current WIA president. Many thanks, Graeme, and greeting to all listeners of the WIA broadcast this week. This is WIA President and Director Scott Williams, VK3KJ. On behalf of the WIA Board of Directors, this week it's with great sadness that we report the very sad passing of John Martin, VK3KM. After a long and courageous battle with ill health, John became a silent key last Saturday, the 23rd of July. Given John's enormous contribution to the WIA and the broader amateur radio community, we believed a special fitting tribute was warranted on this week's broadcast. A little background on John. In the early 1970s, with the advent of amateur satellites and the rapid growth of VHF and UHF repeaters and the growth of VHF and UHF in general, This drove the WIA to establish a National Technical Advisory Committee. John became involved in this committee in 1973, producing a report on the draft 70 centimetre band plan published in Amateur Radio magazine in October of 1974. He served in several roles until a Federal Technical Advisory Committee was established around 1990 to 1991. He was congratulated for a decade service in 2001 by Jim Linton, VK3PC, now Silent Key, then the Victorian Division President. John held three call signs throughout his life, VK3ZJC from 1967 when he first became licensed, VK3KWA from 1993 and then VK3KM from 2005. John became the VHF UHF Field Day Coordinator in the early 1980s, publishing and supporting national VHF UHF Field Days, developing from one to three events over one year. John was active on packet radio from the early days as well as chasing terrestrial DX on the 23 centimetre band, working tropospheric scatter and aircraft scatter. John continued to serve on the Technical Advisory Committee throughout his past years of ill health. The WIA wish to formally acknowledge the enormous contribution John Martin has made to the amateur radio community and we pass on our sincere condolences to John's family and friends through this difficult time. Rest in peace John Martin, VK3KM, now Silent Key. Now on to some brighter news. We'd like to congratulate fellow board member and director Stephen Green, vk 2 TSG, who this week was announced the Citizen of the Year for the Penrith City Council in New South Wales. The awards recognise and celebrate residents who go above and beyond, who dedicate their time to making the city of Penrith a great place to live. Stephen was in particular recognised for his tremendous amount of volunteer work within the community. Very worthy of mentioning is the time Stephen devotes to providing pastoral care and chaplaincy to nursing home residents and mental health patients in hospitals, as well as peer support to emergency personnel. Stephen is also on call to the New South Wales Police when a support person is needed for local use and those with disabilities. Our congratulations once again go to Stephen Green for being the recipient of this award and for his work within the community. Well done, Stephen. Finally, The new Foundation Manual is in print and we will hope to have stock sometime next week. Thank you for your patience and for those many people waiting. The wait will be worthwhile as it's been significantly upgraded. That's it for me this week. I look forward to talking to you on air soon. Best regards, Scott, VK3KJ. This is Greg, VK2GPK, with this week's board comment. One of the benefits that the Wireless Institute provides its members is the QSL Bureau service. The WI QSL Bureau processes many thousands of both inbound and outbound QSL cards each month and has done so for many decades. It is important to recognise that the WI QSL Bureau 
operates with a collaboration and greatly appreciated assistance of both Westlake's Amateur Radio Club and Amateur Radio Victoria. My choice of QSL cards as a topic for this broadcast stems from a recent discussion with a radio amateur colleague who raised the issue of the large number of non-deliverable QSL cards within Australia. Whilst most radio amateurs certainly know what a QSL card is, those recently licensed or prospective radio amateurs and shortwave listeners may not. A QSL card is a written confirmation of either a two-way radio communication between two transmitting stations or a one-way reception of a signal from an AM, FM, television or shortwave broadcasting station. A typical QSL card is the same size and made from the same material as a typical postcard. Whilst there is no official standard size for the card, the de facto standard is 140mm by 90mm. A QSL card derives its name from the Q code, Q code term QSL. More recently, electronic alternatives to physical cards have evolved, such as eQSL. These, for many, do not replace the tangible and historical appeal of real QSL cards, particularly those with amazing artwork. So what is the issue with non-deliverable QSL cards I mentioned in the preamble? Well, the disturbing fact is that typically up to 80% of inbound QSL cards each month are filed WPB, i.e. they end up in the waste bin, thousands of card, each month in the bin. Why? It's very simple. Because they are for Australian radio amateurs who, for whatever reason, are not members of the WIA. And yet membership of the WIA costs less than $2 a week, less than half the cost of a single cup of coffee at a cafe. Whilst Bureau of Processing is carried out by a dedicated team of unpaid volunteers, postage costs today are non-trivial and it is unreasonable that such costs for non-members should be subsidised by loyal WIA members. So if you aren't yet a WIA member or have let your membership lapse, then the best way to avoid that niggling fear of missing out is by heading to the WI website, wa.org.au. Finally, as you may be aware if you're involved in the running of training courses for the Foundation Licence, the WI has now totally exhausted supplies of the current WI Foundation Manual 3rd Edition. On average, we sell just under a 1,000 a year of these books, but fear not, a new revised 4th Edition is at the printers now it will become available in a few weeks. Pre-orders will be accepted by the National Office. The WI member or WI affiliated club price for this manual is $25 plus shipping. It is with some irony to note that the size of the print run for the third edition was strongly criticised at the time in 2016-2017 as being excessive by a vocal few who should not be named. 73, this is Greg, VK2, GPK. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, international news with Jason, VK2LAW. Hello. Good news from Region 1, a non-profit organisation in Spain known for providing grants for projects involving the arts and sport, has made an unusual gift in the support of an amateur radio satellite project. The group, known as the Salvatore 009 Association, is providing funds to help cover development costs and the launch of the satellite in early 2023. The satellite is known as URESat-1 and it's an initiative of Spain's National Amateur Radio Society. The project is being managed by AMSAT EA with support from businesses involved in the space industry and a number of university students. We've made mention of its payload in previous editions of this, the WIA National News, and again according to a post on the AMSAT UK website, the satellite is likely to have an FM voice repeater, support for FSK communications, and an SSDV-capable camera. It's also supposed to carry a project that will permit hams to play chess against the satellite's onboard computer using FSK frames. Road traffic messages in APRS map service. Norway's NRRL, their National Ham Society, reports the Norwegian Public Roads Administration information on road closures, roadworks and accidents is being made available through the NRRL's Amateur Radio APRS map service. 
The Norwegian Public Roads Administration has an extensive system for, amongst other things, road messages. This is information about road closures, accidents and roadworks as well. This is open data that's published in perhaps a slightly difficult format, Datex. Now it's fully integrated, this into NRRL's map service. France's National Frequency Agency, ANFR, has announced the amateur radio 144 and 430 MHz bands will be used for PMR voice comms, 1240 MHz for PMSE and 2.3 GHz for video links during the 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games. The National Frequency Agency is in charge of drawing up the frequency plan and allocating frequencies for the Games. These frequencies will be made available for the organising committee of the Paris 2024 Olympic Games during the period from one month before the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games to one week after the closing ceremony of the Paralympic Games. In order for them to be usable in good conditions, it seems essential that in the vicinity of the sites, their use by radio amateurs is moderated during this period. In news from Region 2, ARRL program for school teachers. Crescent News, Defiance, Ohio, reports a local teacher was selected to attend the Amateur Radio Relay League HQ to participate in the Teachers Institute on Wireless Technology, TI. This professional development opportunity for educators is a technology-focused week-long course on electronics and radio communications. It works well for STEM teachers looking to update their knowledge and collaborate with colleagues from around the world. All expenses are paid by ARRL and participants are given a significant package of supplies and books worth hundreds of dollars to use in their classrooms. To commemorate its 40th anniversary, the Fair Lawn Amateur Radio Club will take the lead in hosting the special event station Whiskey to India, celebrating the intrepid sea and air and space museum on Tuesday, August 2nd at various locations within the immediate New York City area. Primary bands will be 20 and 40 metres SSB and CW. The Intrepid Museum, an American military and maritime history museum, opened to the public in 1982. Today, 40 years later, Intrepid, now a national historic landmark, serves as the centrepiece of the entire museum complex. The museum showcases the aircraft carrier USS Intrepid, the cruise missile submarine USS Growler, a Concorde SST, a Lockheed A-12 supersonic reconnaissance plane, and the NASA Space Shuttle Enterprise. The Intrepid served the US Navy for over three decades and played a role in World War II, the Cold War, the US Space Program and the Vietnam War. The end of paper logs in Brazil? Labre, the National Amateur Radio Society of Brazil, has voiced its concerns about some of the proposals for new regulations affecting amateur radio, published by Anatel, Brazil's telecoms regulator. In return for dropping the requirement for the CW exam for the higher licence classes, Anatel proposed to mandate the use of LOTW, the ARRL's logbook of the world, together with participation in courses and amateur radio activities as proof of proficiency. Visiting or emigrating foreign hams would benefit from such changes when applying with a licence issued in a country without CW requirements for HF. However, Labre contends that Anatel cannot rely on a foreign organisation effectively outsourcing one of its licensing functions. Proof of experience through electronically documented two-way contacts also ignores radio hams who do not make DX contacts or do not participate in contests, but instead dedicate themselves to equally legitimate areas within the ham radio community, such as ham radio in education, emergency support and experimentation. For VK1 WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. Across Australia, from VK1 WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service in the ACT region. That can be heard on our Mount Janini repeaters, 146950-438050 at 0900 local time every Sunday. I'm Amanda. VK1 Whiskey X-Ray. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4 FUQ. Hello there. Now, contest-wise, 2022, 
RSGB Iota Contest is this weekend, July 30, 31, and Bruce will have some history on this event shortly here on WIA National News. WIA RD or Remembrance Day Contest, Saturday, Sunday, August 13, 14. Alara Contest, August 27, 28. And today I'm pleased to introduce Maria, VK5MAZ, Contest Manager for Alara. The 42nd Alara Contest will be held on the last weekend of August, from Saturday the 27th to Sunday the 28th. Starting time is 0600 UTC, finishing 24 hours later at 0559 UTC. The Alara Contest is a lot of fun and open to all YLs and OMs. Although we are slightly competitive, we do help each other by giving out numbers and spotting each other on Facebook. Some of the girls even practice CW together in the months before the contest. We look forward to chatting with those we don't usually meet on air. All YLs and OMs are invited to take part and it is hoped that YLs in particular will enjoy this friendly contest. It is not necessarily about making the highest score, but to enjoy a chat with those that we don't usually meet on air. We would also love to hear some young and new YLs joining in this year, as well as scouts and girl guides. Some of the committee will be handing out numbers on HF and Echo Link during the contest. The contest rules have now been uploaded to the Alara contest page. For those who don't have Facebook and would like a copy of the rules, please email alaracontest at wia.org.au. 73 for now, Maria, VK5MAZ. Alan, VK4SN, joins us now with some great and on-time news. Hi, this is Alan, VK4 Sierra November, with the Trans-Tasman Contest results. 94 logs were submitted out of approximately 350 calls on air. Propagation was favourable and contacts were plentiful. Results are as follows. For single operator high power, Victor Juliet 4 kilo, operator VK4 Tango Sierra with 10,204 points. Category single operator low power was won by VK5 Papa Alpha Sierra with 7,526 points. Single operator QRP was won by VK7 Victor Hotel with 1,940 points. Multi-operator single transmitter was won by VK3 Kilo Kilo with 5,352 points. And multi-operator multi-transmitter was won by Victor Lima 4 Romeo with 8,082 points. Thank you to all who submitted logs and participated. While I have the microphone, the Remembrance Day contest is in two weeks' time. Saturday the 13th at 0300 Zulu is kick-off time, running until 0300 on Sunday. Categories are Single Operator, Single Operator QRP, Multi 1 and Multi Multi, using Phone, CW or Ready or Mix Mode. Contacts can be reworked after three hours have elapsed. There are no blocks in the RD, just three hours between the same contact. If you're in it to win, then staying up for triple points between 1am and 6am your local time is the go. VKCL Logger and M1MM Logger are preferred logging software. Make sure you're running version 4.15 for VKCL Logger. And remember to send in your log within two weeks after the contest. Best 73s, this is Alan, Victor Kilo 4, Sierra November. DX Window and my four in play this week are Listen for a foul, EA5XV who hopes to be on the air from Panama, as the A5XB stroke HB1, June 28th until September the 12th. In the world of DX, be listening on the HF bands for 8N650JP, the special call sign being used by the Japan Amateur Radio League's Okinawa branch. The call sign, 8N650JP, is active through to the 30th of September. Jan Mayan, JX. LB4MI is QRV as JX stroke LB4MI until early October. Activities in his spare time on 20 and 17 metres using SSB. Indonesia. 7B2C, 7B2E, 7B2T, 7B2H and 7B2O are QRV until end of October to celebrate the Japanese Hindu Situ Temple that was built in 1475. Activities on 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres using SSB and FT8. QSL via Rob Adams instructions. For VK1 WIA National News, 
I'm Felix VK for a few Q Inningham. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1 WIA. Now, special interest group news with Bruce VK3 Triple F. And a very good morning to you. Let the games begin. For the Commonwealth Games, where the opening ceremony was held Thursday last, the 28th Amateur Radio is on the podium. In addition to the HQ station GB22HQ, which is operating from the Birmingham NEC, the RSGB is activating seven special special event call signs. NEC, you say? NEC is the National Exhibition Centre, the UK's largest exhibition venue and one of Europe's leading event destinations. Now, these seven special event stations, they are one each from the four UK home nations and three crown dependencies. The call signs were activated from the 25th of July for 28 days, i.e. until August the 21st. Worldwide special interest groups, ATV, every pixel tells a story. The WIA News is on YouTube and ATV stations. Watch out though, a lot of us newsreaders and commentators have really got a face for radio. Worldwide special interest groups, Final Frontier. FO29 has returned to full sunlight and the analogue transponder has been enabled. FO29 will remain in full sunlight until approximately April 14th, 2023, and the analogue transponder should remain active for the duration of the full sunlight period. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, IOTA. This weekend sees the running of the RSGB IOTA contest. So what is IOTA for our newbies? The RSGB IOTA contest is a major international event attracting thousands of participants from all over the world. In 1964, British shortwave listener Jeff Watts imagined that those who live in crowded cities would love to set up a station on a sunny beach among palm trees. Jeff realised that there were too many islands in the world to enumerate, so he grouped together islands, particularly the small ones. In the IOTA program, numbers are allocated to each group using a continental prefix. This idea then turned into the RSGB Islands on the Air Awards program, which recently celebrated its 50th anniversary. The basic IOTA award requires contacts with 100 islands and groups, including at least one from each continent. Now, as Felix often says during his operational news... Listen and work. OC139. Grant VK5GR reports that he will once again be active as VK5KI from Kangaroo Island for the RSGB IOTA contest on now July 30th, 31st. OC165. Members of the Amateur Radio Club Sarawak will be active as 9M8RC from Satang Basar Island, OJ51BT, during the RSGB IOTA contest this weekend, July 30, 31st. QSL via 9W8KIF. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Radio Amateur Old Timers. So, let's check in for details with Clive. Hello everyone, this is Clive, VK6 Charlie Sierra Whiskey, reminding you that tomorrow is the first Monday of the month, time for the Radio Amateurs Old Timers Club of Australia's August Bulletin to go to air. The main topics are the AGM, scheduled for September the 25th, a short item entitled Sun and Sun Spots, some wireless news from 111 years ago, and an opinion on radiation and mobile phone towers. Everyone, REOTC members and non-members alike, is most welcome to listen to the program and to join in the callbacks afterwards. Full details of all transmissions can be found on the RAOTC website raotc.org.au or just Google RAOTC Broadcasts. You can download the audio file at any time from today from the website. 
members and friends of the RAOTC in Perth are reminded that the next lunchtime meeting at the Bayswater Hotel is on Tuesday, August the 9th. Everyone's welcome, and for more details, please email coordinator philvk6zko at pbcasper at bigpond.com pbcasper at bigpond.com 7-3 from Clive, VK6CSW Once again, tune in tomorrow for the August RAOTC Bulletin. Enjoy the program and please join in the callbacks afterwards. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Rescue Radio. An expanded Winlink network will be built soon in Alabama, USA to better serve healthcare and emergency response agencies throughout the state with the helping of funding from Amateur Radio Digital Communications. The planned expansion is the project of the Healthcare Community Amateur Radio Club, KK4BSK, comprising hams who volunteer or are employed in health-related agencies and participate in drills, public events and real-time disasters. The purchase and installation of new fixed stations will fill the gaps that now exist in the Winlink network. And the amount of the grant? Just under 300000 Australian dollars. Worldwide special interest groups, Yota, youngsters on the air. Joining us is Alec, VK2APC. ARRL member volunteers will ensure amateur radio is well represented at the annual EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, as Jason Victor Kilo 2 Lima Alpha Whiskey told us last week in this bulletin. A highlight for we younger hams lucky enough to attend AirVenture is the ability to build and take home a radio receiver to listen to air traffic and other nearby transmissions from approximately 65 to 140 megahertz. The kit designed by student engineer Levi Zima, Killer November 4, Yankee Hotel Sierra, with additional support from his sister Kirsten Zima, Kilo Charlie 9, Romeo Whiskey Golf has been an ARRL offering since 2021. It's great fun to be at AirVenture walking around with the radio kits we've built and tuning into the busy air traffic control tower throughout the event. Radio communications is a key part of learning about avionics. ARRL is grateful to EAA AirVenture for sponsoring the activity, which promises to introduce a lot of young people to radio. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Alec, VK2 APC in Sydney. Now back over to you, Bruce. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Software Development. VK7's REAST, R-E-A-S-T, August presentation is all about accessible GD77 software. It will be given in person by the software developer, Joe Stephen, VK7JS. And for those who don't know, Joe is totally blind. But instead of this holding him back, he has developed a reputation developing software for the vision impaired. Joe has developed many pieces of software, including the very popular JAWS screen reader software that enables blind people around the world to access computers, including reading web pages, interacting with spreadsheets and much more using speech and braille feedback. Joe will take REAST visitors through this development and the features he has built into the accessible GD77 firmware. And it happens August the 3rd in the Queen's Domain Clubrooms from 7.30pm. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F in sunny Bendigo. Now to the social scene and then we're out of here. In VK4, August 6, Redcliffe Club hold the radio display at Altronics, Virginia. That happens at 8.30am, August 6. Redcliffe's car boot sale happens Saturday, August 20 at 9am. This will be held at the clubhouse, McFarlane Park, Clinger Road, Kippering. In VK5, it's the AREG car boot sale, September 10 at David Roche Park at Kilbourne. And back to VK4, Sunfest, Sunday, September 18, 10 a.m. Mountain Creek State School. Now till next we meet, I am Graham VK4BB. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. 
This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.